Welcome back to another episode of Tips, Tricks, and Takeaways. My name is John Butterworth, and this is the first episode on my series in Ableton. Today, we will be looking at how to build a basic Ableton track with click, track groupings, and basic automation. Okay, so looking at Ableton right now, there are two uh, different views you can use. You can use session view, and this is arrangement view. The cool thing about Ableton is there is no wrong answer or right or wrong view to use for whatever you want to use it for. Uh, it's all about just kind of uh, what you feel more comfortable with. I feel more comfortable using arrangement view, and so I'm going to show you how we set up a basic Ableton session with that. First things first, what I like to do, name your tracks. You can do Command R or you can go double click and rename, but I like to do Command R. So for our one MIDI track, we're going to use this um, as our click. I like to make my own clicks um, <clears throat> and I prefer the classic metronome sound, but it's all about what you're used to, what you want to hear. I find that when your metronome is uh, more piercing, you don't have to turn it up as loud and it will still cut through the mix. I have my favorite click sound right here. I use the Clave 808, which is a standard on your Ableton samples, which is right down here. All you have to do to make a click is you double click on the MIDI part and then you can either enter it in with a MIDI controller or you just use the mouse. I just use a mouse. Um, and I use a perfect fourth, which is F and C. So F is going to be my macro click on one, and the C is going to be uh, my micro click, which is on two, three, and four. So once I have that done, I can take that and copy and paste. and for however, however long you need it. And the cool thing about MIDI is uh, for every other song you're doing in your set, you can just copy and paste. And if you need to edit, you can. So right up here, you have your tempo. Uh, and to automate it, all you have to do is push A, which is automate, go down to master, and then you're gonna find under uh, mixer, song tempo. And right here and all you have to do is click and that is now your tempo right here so the fun thing about that is when you're done uh, with one song all you have to do is drag this up or down and that will change your tempo for when you get to that section another good thing to know is uh, when you are um, <clears throat> playing a song if the tempo ever changes uh, or starts to change, you can go back and look at your automation and figure out if uh, you accidentally change the tempo uh, as the song is going. Um, so we have our metronome set, and it is set at 120. Today we are actually going to use um, a song as an example from the awesome Danny G, who is a great uh, flow pop uh, artist here in Nashville that I play for. Um, we're going to use his song that he just came out um, on Spotify with uh, called Miss Each Other with Katie Mack, who's also an awesome artist here in Nashville. If you want to go check either of them out uh, or the song out, you can on Spotify. But this song right here is at 92 BPM. So we're going to go over here and we're just going to right click and edit value and change it to 92. And then you got to do the same over here. So we can uh, click A again to get rid of our automation. And we're just going to start dropping tracks in. And we don't need this MIDI track. All the tracks that we're going to drop in are going to be um, WAV file. All you have to do is drag and drop. And I'll show you uh, a couple things that you'll also need to do. So I'm going to zoom a little bit. Uh, and we will add tracks as we go. But we're going to start with uh, higher instruments. So we're going to start with our guitar. And here's the fun part. So we drag this in. I like to rename all my tracks just so I know what they're going to be. And then I'll show you a little bit later, but I also like to uh, 
um, group the tracks with colors so I know what I'm looking at. And we're going to make sure that it's at 92 and uh, at the tempo we want. Um, Ableton has some really great software that detects the tempo that it thinks a, a track is at, but it doesn't always get it perfectly right. Um, one way you can see that is you see with the wave file that has been dragged in, you look over here and you see segment BPM 9199, close to 92, but not it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna unwarp it, and we're gonna warp it. And that puts it at 92, which means it'll play at the tempo we want. Uh, another very important thing to um, to double check dragging these WAV files in is make sure the track is zeroed out. And you do that by dragging it over a little bit to the right and then finding this little bookend kind of uh, bracket and pulling, clicking and pulling. And uh, you'll see that it didn't expand. So that means that there is no extra hidden uh, part of the track. Um, I'm going to give myself two counts before it comes in. So we're going to keep it right here. That'll give us some time to to to, uh, to hop in before the track starts. So we have our guitar done. Uh, let's go next to keys and synths. A lot of times keys and synths will be separate, um, but in this instance, they are together. So we're going to look at this now. And just like I said before, we're going to rename this as keys and synth. Looking uh, down to the warp, it is at 92. I still like to do it just in case. And then let's see if we can zero it out. Yep, see, look, there's a little bit of extra. Good. Um, another important thing to note is <clears throat> when you're dragging and dropping these things, they will snap to a grid. All you have to do is double click and you can go down to your fixed grid. Uh, you can either turn it off, have it on quarters, eighth notes, 16th notes, or 32nd notes. Um, I like to keep mine on at quarters. It just makes it easier to to drag and drop. So next we got after uh, keys and synths, um, we're gonna add drums. And what we need to do is we need to add an extra couple uh, tracks. So uh, what you can do is you can, you can either go up to create and insert audio track, or I like to do command T. That'll give you an audio track. And then uh, shift command T is going to give you a MIDI track. This audio, I'm going to say drums. I'm going to drag that in. And then same thing as before. Double check. Is that 92? Great. Drag it over. Yep, we got some extra. A lot extra. Okay, so we have drums in. So now this is going to be our bass. And actually, I got ahead of myself. Before we do bass, we are going to do background vocals. I like to put the bass at the bottom, and I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to say Vox. And we're also going to add BGV. And before these go in, I'm going to change the color of this. Uh, I just want to keep them grouped so I know what they are. So uh, Vox, we're putting it in. A lot of times with artists, uh, when we're running tracks, they like to, sometimes in the course, uh, have a little bit of, of them um, as a processed vocal, a little underneath, um, just to kind of add some beef. And uh, by keeping this in the track, um, you can do that on the fly too, which is really nice. So we have our lead vox in, and then we're going to do BGV. As you notice, uh, 76.27, so nice try Ableton, but no, <laughs> it's at 92. Um, so, and we'll talk in a second why I like this uh, view a little better than the session view, um, but I think you'll be able to see. Uh, in a couple seconds why um, okay and last but not least we are doing uh, the bass so we're putting that bass in again 88.1 so we're going to warp it to 92 make sure that we have oops a lot of times I find uh, 
Command Z is your friend. Command Z is undo. Uh, it's easy when you're dragging and dropping for things to happen that you don't want to happen. And Command Z is great to just undo everything that you just did wrong. Um, okay, so all of our tracks are in now, which is super exciting. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to group our tracks. Um, it all depends on what interface you're using, how many outputs you have uh, going to the board. I use a Motu Ultralight um, or a uh, Eye Connectivity, uh, and those have 12 outs. Uh, so um, more times than not, you're going to want to use... Um, stereo on everything maybe not bass because there are very few um, sound systems that can run stereo bass i uh, usually it's i think it's a mono that's what i've been told by sound engineers um but that being said so usually bass can be mono but you want your tracks to be stereo um and i'm going to add a um an spd line next week so if you want to um uh, tune in next week i will show you what uh, we can do with our spd pad so right now we have uh, i'm just going to say we're using um we're running stereo tracks which is going to be guitar keys drums vocals so the fun thing about this is all you have to do is push command g and it groups them and i'm going to say tracks left right and then we're going to do bass is its own but we're just going to group it in case we have to add a synth bass later and this group, I'm going to say bass. Easy enough. Uh, the reason for grouping tracks is when you have uh, outputs, those run to the to the front of house board, and they can individually mix uh, whatever line you're giving them. So if you have enough out outputs and you want to, you could send each one of, of the, uh, the vocals, the drums, the keys and synths, the guitar, the bass, you can send them all to the front of house and then they would be able to mix it like they're mixing a real band. <clears throat> uh, but right now, uh, for the sake of this template, we are just going to do uh, stereo tracks left, right, bass, also do click. So to route this, what you're going to do is you're going to say exterior out, and then make sure that your outs um, are going are uh, are selected in the preferences, which you can get to it by command comma, or you can go up to live preferences. You just find little shortcuts along the way. Uh, but this is I'm using right now a uh, Universal Audio Apollo um, in my studio setup. And so uh, you can go into the input configuration and select uh, what you need. You can also go into the output configuration and select what you need. So you have your mono outputs and your stereo outputs. And something very important to keep an eye an eye on when you're uh, when you're building tracks when you're running them is this little guy up here, which is uh, your ICU meter, letting you know how hard your computer's working. You never want this to be in double digits. Usually in double digits, like once you get up to 10% or higher, um, fuzz starts creeping in because your computer is working really hard. And it also uh, increases the possibility of the program crashing and you don't want your computer to crash uh, while you're running tracks. A lot of guys use redundant rigs, which means using two computers um, just in case one crashes, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So we're going to take our click and we're just gonna make sure it goes all the way to the end. And eventually what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to bounce this, I like to at least, bounce it to a WAV file, and that what that does is then you're not having to draw on samples from your MIDI library while Ableton is working. We're not gonna do that right now for uh, time purposes, but just to know, you would bounce this and then add it, add a, uh, another um, audio track and put that in as your click. Uh, so we're gonna put that in Exterior out four. Tracks left and right are going to be one and two. And then bass is going to be, instead of master, three. 